as soon as you are used to um, uh, using these uh, technologies and something yes. like uh, a programming language for performance mm -hmm. and seeing this as something that may also be um, um, a, a medium um, that's uh, worth um, <laughs> investigating and seeing this as the um, the actual material and not like something like what kind of sound sample <laughs> do you use or what kind of synthesizer but um, seeing this language as the uh, point of interest um, then there's no no real need uh, to show how you're working with it because it seems to be or to show it by just projecting your screen while uh, programming the language because uh, at least for me uh, the reactions to it most of the time have been uh, uh, that or the reactions showed me that it's somehow misleading that it doesn't communicate what my interest in it is because most of the time it's understood as okay you're showing code so this must be something technical so your interest is in the technical part of it but it isn't or it's not uh, it's not the only thing that's interesting and so the method where we, we are right now seems to be something that is uh, Maybe, maybe just an exploration of different methods to communicate what's interesting for us um, in, in different ways than just like projecting what we're doing. Um, <laughs> I constantly get the feeling I'm repeating <laughs> the same thought over and over again and I'm using different words. <laughs> But we're live and can we? Hello, internet. Hello, hello. We're on the internet. Ah, You're going to have to join the banana performance. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's perfectly just the recording that oh. came to life. They are really in, in exactly the same moment. Good. So, um, what do you mean the recording came to an end? So the first, <laughs> the, our first conversation um, ah, okay. ever. So, and uh, and I just stopped the second. Uh, hmm. ah, no, okay. Now I understand. What now you we have just we have two recordings of, okay. you know, of two. And in a sense, we can mix between the two. Yeah. Should we try that for me? Have you asked this The internet says hello. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the software you're using right now. <laughs> <laughs> 30 people watching at the moment. Yep. I'm expecting no, those who are watching the recording. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we should explain what's happening. Hmm? Well, we could. <laughs> <laughs> this is also an interesting question. Um, what's happening? What's <laughs> happening? No, shall we explain? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is self explanatory. Yeah, of course. I mean, <laughs> it's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> what you get is what you see. What you get is what you see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People eating banana. <laughs> 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 Drinking. <laughs> Drinking. <laughs> so we're celebrating 15 years since Changing Grammar's mm. workshop. And um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, and we thought the best way to celebrate is is to actually talk and have a conversation and not to code as such. Right. Yeah. There will be lots of that in the rest of the 168 half hours. <laughs> <laughs> So live is not live. <laughs> so what you see now is not us now talking, but we've already recorded this. Mm. And mm. now we're lip syncing. No, no, live listening. Live, live <laughs> listening. <laughs> That's great. Live, live listening. Live living. Real, real time living. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lena, 
<coughs> and Florian are here playing with recordings of our previous discussion. Maybe could you introduce yourselves or maybe we could introduce I forgot whether we'll introduce all of all of us or are we should we we can introduce where we are. <laughs> where we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm right right now I'm sitting here. <laughs> I'm here as well. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> in Dusseldorf. Yeah. In IMM, the Institute of Music and Media. Mm -hmm. Robert Schumann School. Um, but ch the first change in grammars was in Hamburg. Yeah. Um, at an event organised by Renata and Union. Maybe we should introduce what change in grammars was. Why was it called changing grammars? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> we almost, while we were talking, we were almost touching it, I think, when we talked about rules, mm. and we talked about language, and, <coughs> and that while we talk, we already use certain rules to talk, but in a sense, I mean, of course, we're not just using the rules of language, but the rules of our own discourse, kind of what we are saying, our own logic, and so on. And in order to rethink something, you need to change those rules mm. while you while you're talking, while <laughs> while, um, while everything is going on. So changing rules while they they are in, in place, it's a very normal thing. It's a bit weird sometimes, but it's very normal. Mm. And uh, to move a little bit the perspective away from just programming as such grammars was a good word to use mm. because grammars are kind of the syntactic senseless or half senseless rules of, of discourse any discourse and then changing grammars of course has this double meaning mm. grammars that are changing that are in a process of change or also grammars that are being changed so mm. The sense of it, and I think it still works as a as a title. Mm. So I guess language is something that changes through use. Mm. That's kind of what makes it natural. Maybe that's part of what makes a language natural versus a formal language like a computer language. Is that as you use it. You're not just saying things you've said before, you're coming up with new grammars, new yeah. semantics. Yeah, the computer language is the same. The formal languages are also like, they're, mm. they're also like negotiated and um, just exactly the same thing. But maybe life coding brings that nature out more. Yeah, yeah it's a kind of an opinion that what you usually think, no, no, I mean the language or the application or something is not changing anymore once it's ready. Um, but it's actually necessary to, to change it all the time mm. to live with it. Mm. Or the ability uh, to change it, or being forbidden to change it somehow, uh, is, is quite a limitation to life. Mm. We still the wiki page is still up from that time. Yeah, there's um, no image but there's no image. We later on made this image for, for the retrospective uh, prehistory of life coding C D. Yes. Which has elements from changing grammars actually. Mm. Um, from the screens and so on. But yeah, for the conference itself or for the meeting we have now. Now we're speaking live and not listening live. Yeah, we should listen live. <laughs> okay, let's shut up. Oh, no, 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 should listen. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree and have a problem with what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say anything. I'm listening. 
Syntax error. <laughs> so you're all invited to help me w on that, but in a way that I someone just sees me as a person. We had this meeting in Hamburg, and at, at the end of this meeting, Topflap was formed. In a way, it had already been formed, but we gave a name to it. Mm -hmm. Which is quite important, I think. Yeah. And um, yeah. then it felt like a very nice time when there was a lot to discover um, and a lot to share and communicate. Uh, we had a mailing list called Life Code, and um, which is still kind of going. And uh, yeah, this sort of. It felt like there was something in the air with this live programming and live coding. That, um, but this was a meeting where we realised there were other people doing this as well, like Gu Wang in, um, in the States, um, Adrian in London, um, Nick in maybe <laughs> London as well, you were in Hamburg. Um, and it became a community rather than just an idea, I think, because, yeah, as you said, there was this prehistory of the whole thing, but I think when it became a community, that's what happened 15 years ago. I think this prehistory thing was also a, a, a bit of a joke on the move that we made to cover our origins. We didn't want to start thinking about who has invented what and yes. things like that. What we didn't want to get into this kind of discussion. <laughs> So the self-realization was an important moment. So changing grammars is kind of the, the, the public invention moment, collective invention moment, mm. replacing all these stories, which are also there, and mm. how people got to the ideas, and how different ideas got together. Mm. So now, if not the screen, now we are not live, but <laughs> we, we will have been live or something like that. <laughs> or we, we, what is the opposite of future to past to something? I don't know. Past one and a half. Past one and a half. Um, and uh, yeah, and yeah, of course we are to we are celebrating. So. <laughs> what is the celebration? <laughs> Is it so shady? 
<laughs> the myth of the myth. You know, it's much better if you should. Don't tell anyone. It was smoky. It was smoky. Though. Yeah, so that was that maybe that shade was smoky. <laughs> so that, that smoky bar um, that top left was. Hmm? What? No. Is that, that my name? That was the, uh, the, the stuff in top, top left. Someone in some sofa sitting with some beers said top left was the right name, but it took a while. I think it was Mick who came yeah, to the top left. Probably. And, yeah. <laughs> and he's claiming that one. So, yeah, so he thought laptop, but what came out of his mouth was top left. <laughs> 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 and uh, that was then the temporary organization or something uh, alternative um, for the proliferation <coughs> of life Algorithm. algorithm programming. Programming. Yeah, I said algorithmic programming and you argued the algorithm program. Algorithm. Because all programming would be algorithmic or something, I can't remember. You had to link it. Yeah, just algorithm programming. Yes. <laughs> Please. Jurassic. Two. then our commentary doesn't have to be by talking or it doesn't have to always be by talking but it could also be that we kind of like augment or replace what could be said by what you can hear like sounds or um, in a way um, also by loops or Portions of the original recording, but also by added material. So it's not limited to just talking about talking. What was this? What ha why, what happened? We set up ah, the camera. Yeah, the camera. That, yeah. yeah, that camera that needed to be set up. Right? That took a while. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I have hot glue. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk like this? <laughs> you just um, and cable binder. So it's all about visual. Yeah, so and we also have Shatla puffs, so maybe this is the easiest way to do it. Or Velcro. What do you use for a light? Or you keep sending like that. 
to see that the audio is not fitting to the picture only partly when we are commenting on the meta comment <laughs> another yeah. time and then I don't know. But we could just I think the other thing that depending on other comments. <laughs> 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 and the unintended consequences are <laughs> to try to be funny. <laughs> so it's it's very interesting how it changed your um, perception because at the moment um, when you get aware of that you you're being recorded and that it will be played back then it I mean it, you instantly go into another mode of s talking and um, I mean with the awareness of mm. what you're talking is is replayed and <coughs> I mean it, it's, I mean it also changes our um, our situation here, right? I mean, mm. um, I guess it's going from performing to just talking to the people in front of you. Um, yeah. And back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you hear the th you kind of hear the time flow. Right? I mean, because you feel the awareness, not just the awareness of because we feel each other as presence but you feel the others listening and expecting things yeah and, and waiting for new information and right, no information sometimes <laughs> comes and <laughs> then yeah this changes this this awareness this really changes although it's funny that you can kind of switch also that you can kind of forget <coughs> it for a moment or Oh yeah, but you're, you're, not you're not using it actually, then you're throwing it away. Oh, of course, I mean, part of it is also the existence of a state. It was not mm. all, it is but not you're always necessary for life with this, um, the state. Dif I mean, with the past and the mm. future. Oh, and and in the moment exactly. you're talking, you, but, um, you always have to uh, think of the future from, from as yourself we being in the future from past. From yeah. from yeah. This somehow, I mean, for us, it's uh, always very interesting. Also, in a way, um, you might start to talk in a way that you could refer to it back in the future to what you have been yeah. <laughs> th thinking. <laughs> 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 We're not attempted. 
Yeah. Or maybe you have to agree, but um, <laughs> or at least from from where we came from, yeah. and from uh, in, in in the art. So in the art context, the stage was not really desirable. Or and now we have first and the second recording at the same time it's been necessarily even if you did a performance you didn't do it in, here on the stage but you do it in a certain special so half an hour yeah. or maybe a little bit less maybe less time is also a stage yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, and maybe that's already a bit too much so how much time we how much we add yeah that's right that's one of the things we just noticed that this, these reiterations don't tend to condense and everything <laughs> blow up. Mm -hmm. it's we, 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 as, as much as we try to, well, maybe we gave up on trying um, to. to that's not the it's got a question from the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for the internet. Ask if you recurse <laughs> around, do you get a fixed so point? Explaining things. Explaining if you recurse around, do you get a fixed point? Yeah. Yeah, like commenting on 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 There's always another. So that's why we. You die. Performance context and the time frame we expect. Maybe it's a linguistic answer. I don't think we get it. It's something it's you something don't get a fixed point or you get to a wrong. fixed point, it may be that something like this and emerges. But you don't know. Yeah. Like you can w I, I have the feeling that you can't work towards you want to do the as it maybe it's a bit like a, a uh, like a, a, a special moment in a story or a, or a joke or something like that where it actually uh, is a fixed point. You realize that two things coincide that you have thought that they are separate and they suddenly turn out to be the same thing. That's a way of Would be desirable? A fixed point? Yeah. Like, okay, desirable or? Very desirable. I mean, we've been talking about this a lot in a way of this, in the sense of, what is it? That, that the only s uh, certain thing is that everything changes, uh, contingency, no, wha what's the word? Uh, <laughs> contingency. <laughs> yeah, contingency, okay, yeah, so, so that, that would be maybe a fixed point in a way. Uh, that it's always there, yeah. everything no. is always contingent. <laughs> yeah. no, no, it's yeah. not. But <laughs> I'm not sure, <laughs> just mm. we, we're <laughs> listening to <laughs> the recording and <laughs> we're talking <laughs> similar uh, subject, so it's like more, it's not really a circle to come back to the fixed point, but it's more like um, spiral, yeah, kind of thing. And maybe this repetition will get you from every time you come to something like very similar, that's kind of fixed point or something. Because it, it feels new when it comes back yeah. because you're listening to yourself and it's going to be different. Maybe you could just mm. talk a bit more mm. about the way you start. Continue point of view. <laughs> 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 yeah. Which is not fixed. Mm. Yeah, it seems similar. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know how you th think about it, but maybe a fixed point, I mean, a fixed point would be something where you apply something again and you don't get any change anymore. Like, it's kind of, you're, you're loose, <laughs> you have a screw loose. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and the, the, the question somehow is, is, is this a, a loss of identity or is this identity? Like, you know, like identity, I am myself, myself is I, and so on. You know, you can always circle around yourself. This is like a fixed point. But you could also say fixed point happens and then you lose yourself because there's nothing left. That you can have, there's no resistance anymore. Yeah? You, you cannot apply anything to change anything so you don't know anymore what you are or what what there is and you spin off into a different system or something. But I mean you did this for techniques before mm -hmm. and you had 
before you did this, you had an idea? Something. <laughs> <You had laughs> Good question. <laughs> most, most, I mean, I, I thought, well, when you were talking about it, it was like you, you were on this subject or like today it was the idea of talking about the life coding and uh, maybe combining <coughs> different uh, uh, memories and ideas and so maybe about the concepts and problems of which is difficult <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, I don't I don't so I just remember back to the first time we uh, applied this method without really getting that this would lead us to using this method again or it being a method um, where we essentially had the feeling in order to document something we needed an adequate medium to, uh, to do it in. And instead of just trying to uh, uh, fixate things by writing it down and then not being satisfied bit, uh, by um, how it turned out in written form and somehow having the feeling that things in written form um, s you always iterate um, uh, over these uh, written variants in order to condense them and make them more um, understandable or shorter in a way from the idea of if I have more time then I would have uh, written less or uh, uh, would have um, been more would have been more concise um, we switch to some kind of uh, conversational um, style for documenting what we've been doing and we've been doing recordings before it's of um, discussions which seem to be a lot easier to do and to have something that is fixed in a way um, instead of text and in a way this is like um, <laughs> how you can lie to yourself efficiently because if you look at it from a different perspective then everything you've then writing down um, can also be seen as immutable. And as soon as you take a look at it again, as soon as you iterate over it again, then it's a new version or it's a new text. And in a way, what we've been doing from then on and what we're doing right now is iterating over this method in a way, but we're not iterating over the products that come out of it. So th that was what I meant by contingency as the fixed point. I mean, the, the iteration or the repetition, the act of repeating is is the immutable action in a way. And then that's you could also not repeat. Right? No, of course, but it, I mean, it's a temporary uh, autonomous uh, zone or it's, you know, mm -hmm. something is emerging, uh, emerging and for a certain amount of time um, you're doing it, and then it's Played. falling apart again, and you don't have this situation anymore. It's mm. like the situation you come together, like a meeting or a dinner party kind of thing. You come to together, and you're doing it for a while, and then you it's a temporary organization. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. I'm not sure if this answers your question at all. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, uh, some people come to life and go to and you see it as um, something new. Um, like Paul Walensky likes to quote Mark Fisher talking about um, different ideas about how history has sort of ended and that music now if you listen to new music you can't really tell when it was made because there's no sound of 
there's no current sound anymore. It's just like um, <laughs> this. Uh, everything is sort of placed in the past. Everything's kind of we have this hauntology where um, we're kind of haunted by the past. Um, there hasn't been a sudden movement like punk or um, uh, rave um, for uh, since the internet kind of took over and we became drenched in all this media and uh, um, yeah, the kind of idea of there being a sound of a time and there being a new genre being born kind of doesn't really happen anymore. Um, but Paul kind of looks at life coding and sees that as something new. It's kind of, in a way, it, it seems like we're kind of formalizing music by using code, but also we're open up, opening up the pos possibility of something new and then expect unexpected happen happening. So in that way, it's kind of a political shift from um, be music being stuck to kind of understanding the rules of the music that we're making um, and looking at them and making it so they can be changed. Mm. Formalization is also a big taboo in a, in, in, in a lot of mm. society in terms of the art, in terms of we don't want to be formal because we think we destroy everything. It's an interesting form. part because it's counterintuitive that this, this original idea as you just uh, explained it mm. of yeah. trying to change the rules um, which is something that um, is somehow uh, uh, a transformative approach to music. So you, you try to change what it could be. But in order to be able to do it, you have to formalize how it's been made. And this seems to counteract this uh, expressiveness or some kind of magic of music. Yeah, and this is uh, somehow interesting that um, you may encounter people that are really opposing this idea of formalizing and uh, uh, putting up rules to describe music as, as if you would be working against music, although the intention is quite the contrary. So mm. Yeah. Mm, I didn't understand because for example the magic of music is there is no magic for the composer because he he or she knows what has been done and maybe for live coding for everybody it's it's, it's open it's just you can see what's happening right now what is composed right now so I don't know if that is working against something I don't think it's uh, part of this um, uh, part of this point that live coding is done in the open. What is much more um, um, relevant in this case is that there's some kind of. Um, I mean, you're, you're you're in a way, or as far as I understood it, composition for composers, formalisms always have played a big role. I mean, this may even be. Uh, what composition is to formalize it, because otherwise you could be saying, okay, um, I just make music. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. It just came out of my head. And then you, as soon as you, you, you ask, yeah, but how did you do it? Um, and somebody just doesn't want to um, an analyze how it's been done. Um, then they're like. <laughs> then there's magic. Then th th then there's something you uh, that doesn't explain how it uh, how it worked. But um, then you could ask, how can you repeat the same? How can you how can you come up with this thing again? Or how can you move on from there? How can you transform what you've already been doing if you don't know what you're doing? If there's no kind of um, formalism, there are no rules. But this is just, I, I'm not sure if, uh, maybe even this is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you think about it, but for me, um, the, the, the fun bit about live coding in all kinds of 
way is, is that it's never really present, that it's not interactive. And that is what is new about live calling. There was a lot of electroacoustic music before that that was live, live electronic music and so on. Not electroacoustic, but live electronic music. Live interaction and so on, that was a big thing. But live calling kind of the opposite. In not directly opposite. The direct opposite would be, you know, you pre-compose a piece and you play it back. Mm. But in the act of live coding, you kind of can always feel the non-present. But in a, in a very small, tiny <laughs> space. So yeah, it's never right. I mean, it's always yeah. into the future. Mm. It's, it's never really present. I mean, it's, it's yeah, you have to kind of embrace the distance mm. um, <laughs> between you and the sound. Yeah, and, and the distance is really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's something it's that, that appears. Hard to you, you don't have that very much in, uh, in in a composed piece. You don't have it because it's too far away. Yeah. And in improvised music, it's too close. Mm. Or you don't feel it so much. It's like conducting uh, improvisational composing <laughs> session. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I, I know what he means. Uh, strange in between your just conducting or you just yeah. So it is awkward. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's a bit of trade off. Yeah. <laughs> kind of distancing you from the sound. But one shouldn't remove it or one shouldn't try to uh, narrow that gap. Mm. But play with this gap. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, appreciate it. But at the same time, if the gap between you and the code, um, the you still experience the sound directly and immediately. So there's like these two domains: one where you're listening and perceiving, and one where you're dealing with this strange coded recipe for the sound. Yeah, maybe, but maybe this becomes a metaphor for more other things, and you. Through those glasses, you can also see your own sound perception, for example, and you realize, okay, no, in sound there's also this kind of delay. Mm. Uh, I, I, you know, like I understand in retrospect certain things. It's not that I listen now and then understand immediately. Mm. It's just I always understand later, or I have expectations. And Did any, anybody ever just like? Um, pick up the neurons of the <laughs> head while speaking my life coding and just use that as an input and like code <laughs> 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 that would be funny because if you have a problem you start to embarrass that yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Shelly Knox has been doing um uh what's it called? EEG EEG, yeah. Not um, um as not the one where you go inside the machine, but the thing where you and <laughs> with live coding, well, using it as a live coding. Live with live coding. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Course, yeah. 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 <laughs> she, she did it as perform. Either having a small yeah. 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 So or um, having objections all around. Yeah. So trying to concentrate in order to yeah. yeah I can't remember exactly what it was, but it's one of these sort of commercial. I think that if there's um, a projection. There, Always be another projector yeah. pointing in the opposite direction. Yeah. Yeah. Generally, yeah. Generally yeah. Projectors yeah. should have built in two lenses on both sides. Yeah, trying to <laughs> concentrate in order to manipulate what she's doing while right. coding. Yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> because of. Um. So. Did we say? Would you consider that like teaching and you know producing like production, learning yeah, production uh, ideas in the sense of like training with the um, like cryptocurrency? Watch pass. Which pass pass or the pass idea that. Don't produce I can read out some more things from the internet. Um, B says, uh, says, repetition is mutable as the context is constantly mutating. Question mark. Mm. Unless you consider a hermetically isolated process. And then he disagreed that music was over, saying that, um, yeah, 
the, the whole mumble rap the track the thing. Um, Vaporwave is a manifestation manifestation of this very process, creating a new sound from abusing the ghost of these old aesthetics. So it's kind of self-aware process yeah. where you realise nothing's changed and then yeah, that's turning that into something new. Then Lotpo says, they always think in copies, everything can be immutable if you think nothing is the same. That's a copy with or without alterations. And when the atomics of creating a copy, and um, within the atomics of creating a copy, new elements can emerge. If based in reality, you can take the infinitesimal of time. At every step, reality is entirely re recreated mm. by copy and alteration derived from the elemental forces of their own state is just a copy and alteration of themselves in the moment oh. before. In a way, kind of just <laughs> kind of like yeah. was reminded of how uh, Haskell models I.O. But right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yesterday we said like copy and paste is underrated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, this <laughs> yeah. So, well, I mean, you can say really, yeah, like the the existence is copy and paste. Yeah. 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 But who does the copy and paste? Yeah, I O is just a copy of the world with a single change, pasted. Into just someone the sitting there, control C. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it inflate and divide. The function would be to have copy and paste, which was in place, and then to fold divide, divide right. fold. more fractal. Yeah. Yeah. And then you need uh, you need to fix points in order something fixes. Yeah, I mean, copy and paste is interesting because it, it has this false. Uh, or, I mean, it, it implies that you could create something from nothing in a way because, I mean, the act yeah, of pasting what people think I mean, like it, it copies, what is copying? Re it's <laughs> not really described or it doesn't. I feel like being quite privileged in getting my view across. <laughs> so, what is, uh, yeah, yeah, what is the copying? Is it inflating and dividing mm -hmm. or um, uh, writing it again? Or yeah, I think. Probably the different ways, ways of copying to do with the live coding community is that live coding is about improvisation. Um, but on mobile devices, copy and paste is much harder than on the <laughs> laptop or but, but also <laughs> yeah, maybe and this is a, a, a shame because, because there's such an important thing. Yeah, but I do have the feeling that there is like a transfer of much more the original um, actual um, copy and paste action of what was once maybe text then maybe you can just copy and paste files on, um, on your hard drive and now it seems to be uh, to like something like if I do something like we are doing but in a clunky way with a laptop and, and a, a video camera mounted somewhere and this is what you can do and what is being done by um, mobiles everywhere yeah, that you're just yeah. copying and pasting yeah, something yeah. in yeah. real life. Yeah, because you just take because a you're moving this 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 yeah. act of recording so mm -hmm. and yeah. publishing yeah. into one step. So it's like you're you're walking around and you're streaming live to I don't know Facebook or yeah like this. This yeah, is the new way so or the modern translation of copy and paste in a way because. There it doesn't seem to be anything new produced. It's, trans <laughs> it's transforming, it's not copying. Yeah, but kind of it's yeah I'm not sure. This would be what, what, what I would question. At first it looks like, yeah, we are all producers now, since we don't just... We're consume. transformers. <laughs> You're the transformer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I'm a dinosaur. Uh, you, have a, you, you change the, the medium of the content in a way it looks yeah, it's not copying it's or I mean you could argue up to what a copy or up to what a transformation is a copy but just if you take a picture you're not copying something I mean you're just taking a picture yeah <laughs> 
if I say everything has already been photographed, then I'd be saying that every other uh, photograph is just a copy. I mean, Google already went through all the streets in the world and made a Google Street View of it. Why should I take any photos anymore? For photographers that are out of work, you should also <laughs> all, uh, only take. They can do art now. They can take photos of the backyards. <laughs> <laughs> there are photographers who just go around Google Street View looking for um, images and then republish the them or yeah. for, for take street <laughs> shots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't need to go outside anymore. So, but what is the term that it's like? It, it excludes. People who are mm -hmm. not able to, uh, uh, to think in this kind of language or speak broader things. Mm -hmm. uh, also, ask myself: Okay, is this like a new way or a way of um, talking or talking like in another language? Is it, is it similar to learn like another language? You would start to learn. Maybe I should really start from the first and try to, to follow and you have to support because they're the, the same pictures and like in a kind of connection and but yeah. <laughs> so what do you all think about it? This it's, a, it's always a strong reaction. So people have very strong opinion about that. Yeah, yeah, but it's a strong yeah, reaction in terms of oh, suddenly I see something I never see. Well, how nice! And others say no, but nobody understands this. You know, only specialists. <laughs> there's this strong. Yeah, but, but in language, it's the same yeah. thing. It's yeah, maybe it's not so strong. Japanese. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe. Uh, what what we said uh, earlier, uh, and I just like uh, sticks in my head with the that you uh, were sitting at the bar and talking about um, reversing or reshaping the the production in a way that you would um, not rehearsal at the pub and take it to the stage rather than um, yeah just stage the rehearsal in the pub or you know. Also, maybe a way of um, that you don't understand why is it as perfect, and then you have this feeling maybe to never be able to um, to to achieve something like that. And if you see it, you, you maybe more understand it. So it's just yeah. 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 And to see the the code, to see the code, okay. because in, then you see how it is made. Maybe something. Yeah, people yeah. just really feel uh, I never saw something like that and because I see the event and I hear this uh, effect it makes me understand a little bit I mean you could uh, in respond to you um, you could stage the process of learning a language in a way right? I mean as we do it right now we try to understand something or grasp something and that's the moment of Oh, we 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 are staging it right now as as the mode of production or as the outcome. We don't present the outcome in a way. After we have learned the language, we can now show you what we can express in beautiful mm -hmm. words. Right Rather, we we stage the learning of the language. In a way, also it would be absurd because the result would have to be learned as well again. Yeah. Yeah. If, it, if, if you want to um, convey something, somehow you always have to convey the learning process with it. If you, if you write a text, you have to write the text in a way that someone else who follows the text will be able to kind of learn what you've learned in the text. Of course, you can edit it in a way that is optimal and well, but in, in some way you need to emulate the learning process. So you, you, the hermeneutic circle, you take it serious in a way and you place yourself in the middle of the circle and just, you know, 
that dance in the in the middle of it. The harmonic sounds. There's things about um, Terry that you can understand about understanding the um, language, like um, if you if you're watching a live coding performance and there's nothing on the page um, and the code is written slowly, it's built up, and the leaves of the chord code grows in complexity with it. You can kind of get a feel of complexity growing both on the screen and in the, in the sound. Um, you can also get a sense that a little change is made and a big change is made in the sound. You can see the rhythm of typing and how um, the timing of execution is timed with a change. Sort of, um, you get a feeling that a change is about to be made and then you see it happen and the screen flashes happens. Um, but you can also see things like someone changing their mind, like writing some text and then deleting it again, <laughs> trying something out. Um, so you can kind of see decisions being made. Um, there's sort of a lot of, sort of super linguistic uh, expression that goes on. Um, and even if I know that language is being written, I don't like to read it because I find it a bit distracting. I might look at the screen, but kind of blurring my eyes so that I just mm -hmm. see, see mm -hmm. the movement of the cursor and see it grow. And I think it's still nice to have it there, sort of inviting you into the performance almost. Like, um, so this is a performance, or is it more like a documentation of what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> Moment. So because I I, I I I feel the moment of you can maybe understand what's happening right now, but also that it's something that's like too much. So there's also a visual component, which mm. you it's uh, yeah it's maybe also a little bit like a concert. You mm. and that's maybe the focus mm. to 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 be able to listen to something. Yeah. Um, so and you have, and on top you have this documentation part yeah. or something. So uh, yeah, like can necessarily to um, can present it in the same time. I think that's the thing. Mm. But I guess the question is, is it distracting from the sound? Of oh, course. Yeah. <laughs> the, the simple fact that you are actually really changing the rules. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and this, is, this, is, this is kind of a constant concert. No, no, we already say goodbye. Yeah. You suddenly see, 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 see in the in the show. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole the whole the whole thing the whole thing about this change change So you're in 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> you break everything. 